I remember vividly going to one of our aunt's house. And in those days, the men ate first around the table and the women be last. And I was always afraid there wouldn't be any pie left. <laughs> and I lived, somebody in our family, when I was real little, still called their husband, husband, and not by their name. When my dad passed into his, his final illness, I was in China on a two, two, three year assignment. By the time I got back to Idaho, he was in a coma. I never got to see him talk, recognize me, anything after that. He died a few days later. And I sure wish I'd had a chance to see him before he died. My parents weren't real, real talkative. Every once in a while, they would find some reason to tell the stories of the old days, mostly Depression era and the, the wartime. It was such a magical experience to thought about my youth and years. It was never the time to think about it. Always thinking about my kids, and they're all adults now, but always thinking about my kids, and now their kids. Every time I turn around, it's someone's birthday and wedding anniversary. Got to buy them something, can't let them think of a moment. My real job after graduating college was in New York City. I was working to get Harriman elected as New York governor. That was 1954. Having grown up in a small town in Indiana, New York was at first exciting, but quickly became too big, too dirty, with far too many people. This until I met we your mother. We changed a lot of things. We moved east to live with Grandma Judith. Daddy joined the Air Force uh, just before Pearl Harbor was attacked. Mom got a job after Pearl on the factory line. I had to take care of my sisters and help with the war effort. President Roosevelt was very persuasive. I was married within months after the war ended to Charlie, then had my first boy, Bobby Hart, in 1947. And I remember this two great aunts. Uh, we went to stay there when we were kids, and we had to sleep up in their loft. And they had those old straw. They were straw, there's mattresses, and we all got bites on us. Here they turned out to be bed bug bites. And here's Grandpa. Your grandpa, my dad, and little Jimmy is just looking at him. It must have been a sunny day. Dad was lying in the sun. See, I can't remember things, but as I see a picture, it brings all of it back to me. That was dad with his old plow out of that potato field. We had to take this whole field, it was probably two acres of potatoes. It was next to the road, and we had to take these cans with some kind of a, I don't know, bug killer in it, and we'd have to scrape those potato bugs in those cans, bend over all day long, and little Jimmy did too, and he was only two and a half or three years old. He got diarrhea. I was so mad out in that hot sun, that little kid. And then what our idea of fun was, when anybody honked, we'd get to raise up and wave, but we took these, these cans with some kind of a disinfectant. Julie and the Krauss girl and this little girl was a neighbor that lived across the street. Can't even remember her name. There's Karen Moeller who lived next door and there's Peggy Mulligan who is a pediatrician now living in New York. This is Maureen Maloney. and I was at this dinner party, it was Christmas, and I felt really woozy. Well, I made it to the bathroom and passed out. And actually, I was back in school at the time. I was going to get my, my degree in theology. I came in and said, Jenny, you're gonna be a mom, and you're gonna be a great one. And I'm like, what? <laughs> well, that was December, right around Christmas. I remember calling my mom. I said, Mom, I'm going to have a baby. Here are some photographs of Camp Wildwood. It was the summer of 1937. I was 12 years old. 
thought I knew everything. Spent my entire allowance on a camera and film. Took pictures like crazy. Because it was my first time away from home. Away from my sisters. 1937. There was Punky and Betty Radcliffe. Louise and June, Jella and Zella DeWay. Yep, someone named their kids like puppets. And Shirley, Lois, people I haven't thought about in years. Hmm. Oh, till I went through some old dusty boxes that I found in the basement. <laughs> Wildwood was a girl summer camp in Westerville, Ohio. Westerville was Farmland, woods, and Camp Wildwood. And There's a picture of my oldest and dearest friend. Her name was Marty Ross. And she always wore her hair up and had strings hanging down. And I called her Mop Teeth. And Mop Teeth. Mop Top. And she called me Awning Teeth because of my buck teeth. <laughs> and we were the best of friends until one day when I was a bakery manager in AMP just a couple years before I met Wayne. She had told one of the drivers, I was bakery manager then for MPT Company on Parsons Avenue. And she told one of the truck drivers apparently that was my name. And when he came to the back door, he yelled right up through the, hey, Tommy T, you to kill it. But she was the sweetest, dearest girls. She took care of her mother.